Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to America once again. We're going to go to North Carolina and we're going to a little town called Asheville in the western part of the state. North Carolina is actually quite a bit wider than I remember it being. I didn't remember it being such a kind of wide state if you like. But we're going to a little town called Asheville like I said and it's very close to the Tennessee border. I think, I'm not sure if that's Appalachia but we're going to do my first review from Highland Brewing Company and this one is their oatmeal porter and it comes in at 5.9% ABV so this one was one that my mum and dad actually brought back with them the last time they were in the States and they just thought it was quite funny that there was a Highland Brewing Company over in America but it seems to be quite a highly rated beer it had a 92 on rate beer when I checked it out earlier so it should be quite a nice one and these guys seem to be a fairly uh, a fairly big kind of regional brewery over in America so should be an interesting one to try it's always cool to try different beers from different parts of America of course because we only really get the kind of the Californian ones and the Colorado ones and a few of the other fairly big craft breweries over here it's not often that we'll find stuff from different states like this so I'm looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll just tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Highland Brewing Company a uh, very first time I'm trying one of their beers like I said there's all the usual social media if if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all my american beers that i've reviewed and that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated and if you are watching from the north carolina kentucky tennessee sort of region do make sure you check out my friend Rod over at Rod J Beer Ventures. He reviews a lot of the local beers from that area. Very nice guy, of course. But anyway, to tell you a little bit about Highland Brewing Company then. So as I mentioned to you, Highland Brewing are based in Asheville in North Carolina and they were founded back in 1994 by Oscar Wong. So Oscar was originally from Jamaica and he went to America to study engineering. I think it was civil engineering that he specialised in. But after a successful engineering career, he decided that he wanted to retire and he actually started up Highland Brewing as a hobby in the basement of Barley tap room in downtown Asheville but at this facility they produced around 6,500 barrels of beer per year but their beers proved so popular that they just simply couldn't meet the demand for their beer so for a short period of time they actually brewed at Wild Goose in I think it was in Frederick in Maryland and in late 2006 they opened a new 50 BBL brewery back in Asheville but in 2010 they opened a tap room at the brewery which also has a three, a three barrel pilot brewery and the following year Oscar's daughter Leah actually joined the company I think she's going to gradually take over the running of it but the brewery have continued to expand because their beers have been very popular and like I said these guys are quite a well known sort of regional sized brewery over in America these days so it's quite an interesting brewery this one it is always cool to learn about new about new different breweries and stuff like this and it is always cool to try beers from different states in America because there's you know there's 50 of them and there's god knows how many breweries I think the last time I looked at it, there was about 4,000 breweries over in the states or something like this so America really kind of is the home of it of craft beer these days. Belgium I guess and Belgium and Germany and maybe the Czech Republic as well are the original homes of craft beer but in modern times it's definitely America that's kind of made big strides forward in that regard but they've got quite an extensive range of beers like I said the brewery website's in the description below and you can check out all the different things that they do and hopefully I can find some more of those for you in the future to review but that's all you need to know about the brewery for just now let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So on the side here it just tells you a little bit about the oatmeal porter it says tradition led to a uniquely smooth combination Porter was the dominant style in Britain throughout the 19th century. I'd probably say it was more London, to be honest, than the whole of Britain. But our addiction, our addition of flaked oats produces a silky mouthfeel, unusual for beers this dark. It is very malty with hints of chocolate roasted flavour and well-balanced hop character. Highland's name honours the Scottish, the Scots-Irish who settled in the Appalachian Mountains in the 18th and 19th centuries and whose culture continues to influence local music, drink and language. Founded in 1994, we are Asheville's first legal brewery since Prohibition. That's pretty cool actually but yeah there you can see 
nicely presented this one. You can see the Highlander enjoying what looks like a German beer stein actually on the label. So quite nicely presented this one. I do like that. And like I said, that was one of the reasons my mum and dad got this one for me, simply for the fact that it, um, it, it was Highland Brewing Company and they found it over in America. It says just a wee bit different on the side as well. And there is the Highland Brewing Company bottle cap on this one. So yeah, this is 12 fluid ounces. I do wish America would just use the, uh, the metric system on this one. I'm guessing that that's 355 millilitres because I've seen it on other ones but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting yeah nice smoky opening on this one I'll be keeping the bottle cap off that and you can smell some of that nice chocolate coming out of the beer already but yeah it should be really nice I really don't get that I was reading America North Korea and I think maybe Panama or something like that are uh, one of the are the only countries in the world that still that do not use the metric system I wish they would just they would just convert and use it because it would make things a lot easier I guess but yeah as you can see this is a really nice looking beer there's a finger of a frothy kind of beige tan head on this one one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head if I hold the beer up to the light it's a nice kind of dark chestnut color it's actually quite clear but it won't appear like that on the camera probably just because of the colour of it but it's got a nice ruby edge to it and I think it's as I say I think it's fair to describe this one as being a nice kind of chestnutty colour so let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on it smells really nice actually so yeah you can smell the nice kind of OT character to this one it's got that nice kind of brown bready note that you expect at the porter of course, the main difference between the porter and the stout is the type of yeast that they use. Normally, you would use a kind of lager type, a lager or sort of pillage yeast for the uh, to, to brew a, a porter. And the stout yeasts tend to be something that can tend to be kind of specialised. Actually, the difference mainly between these styles is the mouthfeel. The porter is always a little bit lighter in the mouthfeel than the stout is, and usually a bit lower in alcohol as well. But yeah, it's got that lovely kind of brown bready note. You can smell a good bit of kind of brown sugar in this one, some caramel, kind of toasted caramel I would say, maybe a little bit of toffee or something like that as well. There's maybe a little bit of chocolate, you can get that dark kind of cocoa note out of it as well. But there's quite a lot going on in this room, but it really it leans towards the sweet side of things. It's not too roasted, although you can pick up a little bit of that roasted black malt, mainly it's a nice kind of brown bread, you know, some sweet brown sugars, quite toasted and like I say, just a little bit of chocolate. There's a wee bit of kind of, uh, there's a wee bit of a, a sort of earthy hop note coming out of this one and maybe just a little bit of a red fruit character as well. If you take it in quite deeply you can smell this nice kind of red figgy character coming out of it. But it smells quite nice, it really leans more towards the sweet side of things than anything else. But you can smell that it is just, it has a little bit of that kind of creamy note that you expect of the porters as well. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience when it comes to whiskey, sake, craft beer and all of these sorts of things. But yeah, let's get stuck into this one then. So this one's the Oatmeal Porter from Highland Brewing Company in Asheville in the western part of North Carolina. Let's get stuck in. Slanja. That's pretty good. I have to say that is pretty good actually. I like how that one comes across. It's very very smooth. That's the thing you're going to see. And they did say, well, they did say that to be fair on the bottle. But yeah, with this one. I like how this comes across. The aftertaste that this one gives you is really nice. It's got that kind of roasted black malt base to it and then you get that nice brown bready character on top and then some of the chocolate is just sitting in there too. It's a really quite interesting aftertaste this one. It does feel a little bit thicker in the mouth feel than you would normally get from some of the porters that are brewed uh, down in England, the sort of traditional real ale style porters. There's not that many porters actually brewed up here in Scotland right enough. But that's nice. I'll tell you straight off, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. As I always say with these dark beers, sugar it around it in your palate a little bit and just let your whole mouth adjust before you start analysing the flavour too much. But that's nice. So yeah, 
there's some toasted black malt character to this one that just kind of underpins the beer on top of that in the middle of your palate where all the malty characters come out you're getting this nice kind of brown bready note, that oatmeal-y character. There's a good bit of a kind of grainy, slight bitterness to it, but you can feel just the roasty black malts underpinning this beer. There's some nice brown sugars in there. In the middle of your, right in the middle of your palate, you can get a little bit of that chocolate sweetness. But it's a really quite nice taste in beer, this one. It leans definitely towards the roasty side of things more than anything else for me. Yeah. It's got a really smooth mouthfeel to it, like I was saying, but overall the flavour does lean towards a nice, kind of dark, roasted malt character. It's really, it's quite a nice beer, this. Like I said, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. In terms of the hoppy side of the beer, in the back corners of your palate, there's a nice little bit of a, a, a big earthy hop character. I do wonder if they've used English hops in this. Maybe some of the Fugles hop that you get from England is what they've used. But of course, I think the Americans like to use Summit and things like that in some of these darker beers as well. Summit seems to be quite a popular one for uh, for dark beers like this. But yeah, that's really quite nice actually. But as I said, some hop, some dark earthy hoppy bitterness in the back corners of your palate. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, the other hoppy characters, they just smooth out a little bit. You can feel a little bit of kind of bitterness in the front corners of the palate. It does have a little element of kind of a, a sort of floral and grassy note. You can feel that it's just a little bit lighter and grassy around the front curve of your palate. It really does make me think there's English hops in here, actually, the way it comes out, because it's got that kind of... Uh, almost ashy earthy character to it and that to me is kind of what you normally get from the likes of Kent Goldings or uh, the Fugles Hop is an even more ashy one actually. As I've said before when it comes to porters and stouts and things the English hops can be really nice but when it comes to golden ales and stuff like that. I really hate the, I really hate having uh, English hops in them because I just don't like the earthiness and in an IPA and then a gold nail and stuff like that. I just do not like the earthiness that they give you. To me, it's far more suited to some of the darker styles of beer like this. But that's really nice. I do like just how everything comes across, but you can feel that nice little grassiness around the front curve of your palate too. It's a, bit, it's a really well-balanced beer, actually. It's a little bit thicker in the mouthfeel, I think, than you normally expect for a porter, but it's nowhere near as thick as what you would get for an Imperial Stout or a Stout beer or something like this. It does have a little bit more thick... It, within the porter style, I think it's fair to say, within the porter style, it does feel a little bit thick to me, but um, it doesn't, it doesn't in, uh, kind of step into the stout category at all. It does still have that lightness that you would expect from the porter in comparison to the, the stouts and the imperial stouts and stuff like this. There's a little bit of fruity character. This one, as I always tell you, there's a little oily bubble that you get behind the front curve of your palate and you can just get some of the nice red fruity esters in there. It's a little bit of a figgy note and it just comes out in the aftertaste. It reminds me of the little heart-shaped sweets that you get in the Haribo Star Mix, actually. It's just got that kind of candied red fruit ester to it. But as you move further and further into the aftertaste, it's those kind of brown, bready, oatmeal-y characters coming out of the beer. A little bit of the chocolate, and then that roasted kind of black malt backbone to the beer. Overall, it's really quite nice and just well-balanced. So if it sounds like it would hit the spot for you, I'm sure it will. But these guys, from what I understand, do some pretty nice beers. I do hope I can try their Scotch Ale in one of their IPAs at some point. So hopefully I can get out to the States and Asheville from what I saw in the pictures looked like a really quite nice spot so hopefully I can get out to visit these guys at some point in the fairly near future. It's actually been about eight years since I was over in America but I've seen something like 20 states so I started to go out east but hopefully I can go out and have a look at the Carolinas one time. That's a place I've not actually been yet but of course there's so many places in the states it's just a case of where do you go. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then I would say it's mid-bodied. Like I said within the porter category it's a little bit heavier than some of the other ones that I've had. Um, the carbonation on this one is quite smooth. It does have a little bit of activity and that makes the beer just a little bit more drinkable. Overall, I'd say it's a bit of an oily mouthfeel that this one has. It has a little touchy creaminess to it as well, but mainly it's an oily mouthfeel. There's a little bit of hoppy bitterness in there, some nice kind of malty sweetness. Like I said, it has a good bit of roasty character from the malt as well, and there's just a little touchy kind of fruity character to it as well. But overall, it's a really nice beer, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. On the basis of that one, I definitely want to try some of their other things that they do. Like I said, I hope I can try their Scotch Ale at some point. I love trying Scotch Ales from different parts of the world. They've had them from Belgium, 
uh, from Belgium, from Brazil and uh, Japan actually as well I've had some Scotch ales from but it should be uh, really nice to try that but it, I can see why this brewery have kind of grown because they're obviously producing some pretty good beers but yeah it's been really cool to review another one from a different part of the states of course and it is cool to find Highland Brewing Company and bring that over to Scotland and have a look at it but thank you to my mum and dad for giving me this beer of course and thank you to you guys for watching as well so as always thank you for watching uh, do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Highland Brewing Company as well and hopefully I can return to them in the near future but until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff do check out my social media but most importantly thank you for watching and do make sure you support your local craft breweries and do please let me know about some of the other North Carolina breweries that I should check out as well I've only ever tried a couple of collaborations I think this is my first dedicated review that I've done to a North Carolina brewery so hopefully there's more in the future but until the next time Slange just now the oatmeal porter from Highland Brewing Company over in Asheville North Carolina Slanger just now.